We have been hearing a lot of talks about how the United States has avoided a recession and that we are in for a soft landing and everything around us is improving. But what if I told you that all of this is a lie? In this video, we are going to be exposing this as well as playing a clip from Patrick Bet David to really kind of tell you guys that, listen, what's happening right now it's going to be way worse than a recession. This is going to be one of the largest financial crises in history. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. So outside of the US, we are now starting to hear the big R word being mentioned. German economy in recession with no more growth seen in 2024. There's no clear catalyst for a turnaround followed by South Korea tech exports slow for second month in risk to growth. And also, New Zealand consumer spending fell further in third quarter. All of this is in the month of October. And also, over here, you can't make this up. Core CPI inflation is now rising for the first time in 18 months. Headline PPI inflation is now rising for the first time since June. Last month's PPI inflation number was revised higher. Core PPI inflation is now up for two straight months. Last month's core PPI inflation number was revised higher. How did the Fed just declare victory against inflation? Well, it's because it's election year. It's election year, so they have to make things look like it's all, you know, sunshine, no clouds. And what this is going to lead to is one of the most historical crashes and collapses of the global financial economy that we have ever witnessed. But this is exactly what they have wanted since day one. I've been very, very focused on this for a while, as you guys are probably all aware. They are pushing us into the wood chipper and they want to they they want this and when i say they i mean the elites that are pushing for digital currencies and a reset of the system and a new monetary system but also as we look at inflation yeah the fed did not you know beat inflation at all check this out while september cpi inflation is at 2.4 percent Inflation is much higher in many basic necessities, and this is exactly how they're lying to us, propping up the financial system, propping up the economy, and lying to you. Car insurance inflation, 16.3%. Transportation inflation, 8.5%. Homeowner inflation, 4.9%. Car repair inflation, 4.9%. Rent inflation, 4.8%. Hospital services inflation, 4.5%. Food away from home inflation, 3.9%. Electricity inflation, 3.7%. Core CPI inflation is now at 3.3% and rising for the first time in 18 months. Meanwhile, 258,000 Americans filed for unemployment this week alone. Consumers are struggling. Now, outside of this, let's go back to August when the warning signs were already there. On Wednesday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics will downward revise jobs for the April 2023 to March 2024 period by up to 1 million. This means that all beats record in the past year will have been misses and the US job market is in far worse shape than the admin would admit. And again, this is because they keep lying to your face. Now, Patrick Bet David is also sounding the alarm on all of this at the same exact time that we have 1.8 trillion in a deficit that you'd expect during a serious recession when tax revenue is up 11%, including 26% more from businesses and deficit should be much lower. The problem is too much spending, not net interest payments are up 24% in one year as well. Now, as we think about this, stock market is at all-time highs though, right? So everything should be all good. The economy is fine. Stock market's at all-time highs. Yeah, check out this video clip from Patrick Bet David. 
Remember a couple of years ago, how everybody was talking about that a market crash was coming. Everybody's like, oh my God, what if it happens? What if it doesn't? Now everybody's talking about it's going to be soft landing. There's not going to be any recession. And there's one thing that people forgot about. The saying, only the paranoid survive. This is coming soon. That starts this month. A month before election, there should be a recession in America. So people are now, it's totally fine. Look at the market. It's near all-time highs. But is it really? If you were to pull out the top seven stocks, when you see the numbers on this, it's staggering. And on top of that, there is an indicator of when a recession actually hits. And it isn't while we're raising interest rates, the Fed. It happens after we stop raising rates. And wait till you see how long it takes for the market to crash. And by the way, I got a bunch of other data to share with you, but uh, I've learned one thing for sure. Having been in the financial industry since the day before 9-11, only the paranoid survive. And those who are way too confident are typically wrong. And those who are way too cocky are also typically wrong. So here's US interest rate hikes in the history of America when we raise rates. We have never raised 4.88 percentage points as quickly as we did in the state. Nothing comes close to the 22 to 23 of 4.88. But what does this really mean? So if we look at the balance sheet, of, uh, this is pretty much the quantitative easing balance sheet. That shows how much bonds the Fed is buying. The M2 money supply shows how much money is circulating in the economy. So you notice, look how historically it's gradually climbing, climbing, climbing. But it's nothing that's sudden. Then all of a sudden, boom, we feed the economy, the market, with trillions of dollars we're not accustomed to. And we don't have another case study for somebody to say, well, here's what's going to happen. Well, it's totally okay. Well, don't worry about it. Based on what? Based on what case study can you speak so confidently saying nothing's going to happen? Everybody is almost protecting whatever business they're part of, investment they have. They're trying to sell why they're right and maybe don't worry about it or do worry about it. But the reality of it is nobody knows 100% what's going on because we've never been here before. So let's continue. So then 2024 projections, what's next for the U.S. economy? They did a survey to find out who thinks a recession is coming. The Fed staff says 0%, there's not going to be a recession. I remember they're in the business, so they're supposed to be saying that because that is Wall Street, right? Yield curve says 61% chance a recession's coming next 12 months. Economists are at 48%. Consumers are at 69%. That's Main Street, you and I. Goldman Sachs is saying only 15%. Bank of America, 35 to 40%. But look at CEO, 84%, okay? C-suites are saying 84%. Now, what would CEOs know that the rest of them don't know? Maybe they know their debt payment. Maybe they know when their debt payment interest rates that they got was lower, that if they have to renew the debt that they got, it's going to go up here. How the hell are we going to make those payments? Maybe we ought to look at what some of these CEOs are talking about. You'll notice the percentage of S&P 500 companies citing keywords on earning calls. What words they're using fewer times. Inflation has decreased. Material costs decreased. Economical slowdown decreased. Job cuts went up, but it's also decreased. So could this be a sign that everything's going to be okay? If yes, why are CEOs at 84% saying a recession is coming? Are they Houdini? Are they Nostradamus? Are they somebody that can predict the future? What do they know that the rest of the people don't know? Now, when it comes on to S&P 500, these are the 500 biggest companies in America. Something very interesting is happening. There are seven companies that make up 28% of the S&P 500. Let me break this down for you. 500 biggest companies, seven companies make up 28%. In the history of S&P 500, never has there been a time where seven companies make up 28%. We've never had seven companies. You know, too big to fail. What are these companies? You got Meta, Facebook, NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, and Tesla. So why is this important? Here's why. If you look at the S&P 500 year-to-date returns, you will notice a number roughly around 12%. Could be higher, could be lower, but it's not 12%. You know what Magnificent 7's return is for the year so far? Roughly 92%. So what happens if you take the seven stocks out and there's only 493 stocks left. How's the S&P 500 doing? It's down. So the seven are pulling the rest of the market and it looks like everything else is okay, but is it really? So again, just like we are being lied to on almost all the data around CPI, around the jobs report, we're also being led into a 
point in this market where it feels as though stocks are going crazy, the markets are good, everything's fine, but in all actuality, it's being pulled up by seven stocks. And most of the stock market itself is still needing a soft landing. For example, financial technology stocks need a soft landing. SoFi, once one of the hottest stocks, fell nearly 85% from its 2021 peak into mid-2023. Now, it's up 43% since its August 7th bottom, as markets priced in heavy rate cuts into 2025. Along with many fintech companies, SoFi's comeback strategy largely relies on a soft landing. In an in-depth report, SoFi's business strategy and transformation is explained. Can they do it? Read more at the link below. Now, again, a lot of the uh, markets out there are still calling for a soft landing, but it was never achieved. And this is why when we look at what's going on right now, with all of the data that we have, with everything that's already happening outside of the United States, with you know the big R word being mentioned, it feels as though the United States is on a path to a recession or something much larger. And in my opinion, I do believe that this is going to be much bigger than a recession. I think that this is going to be one of the largest crises that we've ever seen, especially as we do look at even currently speaking, the earnings of both the Meg 7 and the other 493 companies, which are expected to slow in quarter three. And this actually kicks off on Friday. This is a very big thing to follow. It is estimated that S&P 500 earnings will grow by 4.0 in quarter three, a sharp decline from an 11.0% increase reported in quarter two. In July, profit growth expectations were as high as 7.9%, meaning Wall Street firms have significantly lowered their forecast. Moreover, the Meg 7 stocks are anticipated to increase their net income by 20% year over year, the lowest rate since quarter one of 2023. The S&P 500 companies, excluding Meg 7, are forecasted to grow earnings by just 1%. We now have earnings season, the 2024 election, Fed uh, rate cuts, and geopolitical tensions in the spotlight. Quarter four is going to be a wild ride. And yes, it is going to be a wild ride, especially riding on, you know, the fact that the data is just not accurate. Nothing is making sense right now. We are in a point in time around our entire economy where we are just, it, we know that this is not sustainable. We know that this is not sustainable with debt surging, with all of the data that we have now in front of us. It just feels like there's only one answer to all of this, which is something is going to break and it's going to break in a large way and it's going to cause these markets to absolutely implode. And it's only a matter of time, in my opinion. I do believe that we are at that point where it's a ticking time bomb. We're just waiting. I would argue, best guess, probably quarter two of 2025. We'll definitely come back to this. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, this has been Nick. Peace out.